smartphone, which is apparently smarter than that uh, clock up there. It is now six o'clock and I'm calling to order um, the June 6th meeting of the Planning Commission of the City of Placerville. Uh, if you could all rise and pledge allegiance to the flag with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see, uh, Commissioner Friend. Here. Commissioner List. Here. Uh, Chair Roby. Here. Vice Chair Zaragoza. Here. And Commissioner Wolf is on vacation. Thank you. We have a quorum. So we're looking at item number one, consent calendar. Um, the agenda from June 6th, which is today, the minutes from May 2nd, and the uh, adjourned minutes from May 16th. Do we have any items to be pulled off the agenda, or do we have approval of these items by consent? No items to be pulled off the agenda? Approval by consent. <clears throat> This is the time that we make uh, accessible to the public for uh, items that are under the Planning Commission's purview, which are not on the agenda tonight. Um, we'd like to know if there is anybody in the audience who has a, um, a topic that they would like to address tonight. Go ahead and approach the podium. And if you would voluntarily uh, state your name. Hi, my name is Mandy Winicky. Evening. Hi, um, I am um, here in regard to the zoning amendment um, regarding front yard fencing, walls, and use restrictions. Uh, my name is Mandy Winicky. I recently moved to Placerville. May I interrupt you for just a second? Sure. Um, if there is something that you like to would like to address that is in our agenda there will be oh. time for the oh, public. okay yeah so this oh, is okay. this is for topics gotcha. that the gotcha. planning commission addresses okay. that is not on the agenda Let so we will definitely do that okay no other comment uh communications to the board no communications mr chairman New business, item 5.1, uh, amendments to the City of Placerville Development Guide. And we have the staff report, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, Planning Commission. Um, this, this is a consideration uh, to make a recommendation to the City Council to amend Chapter 8, which is the signage uh, chapter of the City of Placerville Development Guide. Uh, we've modified text and made graphic additions uh, that are intended to help illustrate for the user of the development guide as to the appropriate placement locations for sign types and to bolster existing guidelines relative to sign materials and sign illumination, generally within the city of Placerville, but foremost within the city's historic commercial corridor along Main Street. And this is sort of being done in anticipation of, of an item that we will hope to eventually uh, bring to you and bring to the City Council to uh, have considered incorporation of the uh, commercial Main Street into an historic district. And so uh, staff looked at the development guide and we found that uh, the uh, signage chapter of the design guidelines was, well, let's just say a little on the weak side. So it has been bolstered. I'm happy to go through uh, some of the changes that we made more specifically that's in your um, staff report. Uh, the changes made, uh, you will see, are done or shown clearly by underline and strike out. And so if you turn to uh, the first page there under, under eight signage, uh, you can see where we've um, made some modifications in, in the general chapter. 
Uh, more importantly, I want to point out under Section A3, we changed shall to should. We just felt like that would add a little more flexibility uh, when these items come before you and or to the City Council. Uh, if you turn the, to the page as well, you can see where uh, we've added a lot of uh, pictures. One of the comments that uh, uh, was provided to staff is that uh, we needed some more illustrations of what we want to see in signs and also maybe some pictures of some signage that we don't particularly want to see. For example, uh, if you look at the bottom of the page there, we have inflatable signs, which typically are not allowed uh, as a matter of right. Uh, we, we can't allow them under a special temporary use permit if there's some special event or something going on, a grand opening. Uh, some special sale, they can come in, they can apply for a TUP, and they can be allowed to put up that type of signage on a temporary basis. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we want to discourage people from just putting that just on, on the whim. Um, if you turn then uh, the next page to Section B, you can see it's Main Street Historic Area. And it's under that section where we made a bulk of the changes that so you, you can see in, in the underline. And we have a, a whole section where we have actual figures uh, that show the type of um, signage that we that we typically see on historic buildings. And we've added a lot of um, uh, verbiage to that effect. So uh, with that, there's um, I don't really have anything more to uh, add at this point. I'll be happy to answer any questions any of the commissioners have at this point. Do we have any uh, questions for staff from the board at this time? First, I want to thank uh, staff for taking into consideration the comments that uh, the commission had the last time we saw this, Pierre. Uh, just a real minor point on uh, page 13-3, Main Street Historic Area, item 6, it talks about the hanging signs, and then we have the text that's been struck out there. That text actually emerges then under uh, B5, the following page. That is correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm just just wondering if it wouldn't be more appropriate, and I realize this is petty, if it would be more appropriate just to take that language and make it as a, a 6 sub A, because it's still directly related to item 6. I, I was surprised when I, when I read this, saw it was all striked out and thought, well, we have to have some parameters for it, and it did show up over here. And I realized that the logic appears to be you're still dealing with placement of signs, and I get it, but it just seems to me if somebody is contemplating a hanging sign, they have all the information in one place at one time. Boom. So th that's just a suggestion. Sure, we can we can certainly do that. Thanks for that comment. One comment in relationship to the the verbiage to the pictures. Um, I would like to see that each one of the pictures have a figure number under it. As an example, if I call you and I want to talk to you about uh, the third picture on the left on page such and such. Uh, it makes much more sense to me to be able to say, um, I'm looking at figure 2-3 or whatever it happens mm -hmm. to be. Um, I think that would clean up. And there's a couple places where in, in the text you're referencing a picture and yeah, there's only one picture on that page, but sometimes things get rearranged. And so I think it would be better if it actually stated we're looking at figure such and such, and that figure was there. It's the way they do textbooks. Sorry, that's so my. No, staff agrees with that, and I think it makes a lot of sense. And staff is on the phone a lot with um, you know clients, customers, business owners, wanting to add signage. And so, if they are referring to this document on the other end of the phone line, it does make it easier yeah, to be able to be reference. Yeah, you may talking about right. the same picture. So. Right. We can. We'll certainly do that. Any other questions for staff at this time? Any comments? Okay. We will, at this time, open the floor for public comment uh, on item 5.1. Um, good evening. Kathy Lishman, Placerville. Um, I had a couple of questions. One, I know this is the development guide it's a guide but we also have a sign ordinance and I, I 
I, I missed the discussion you had about changing shall to should, but it seems to me when we're talking about sign, and this really, I guess this isn't part of the ordinance, but I really feel like it should be, but um, it's like a red light, you should stop, but you don't have to stop. Um, you know, I'm kind of confused between doing signage in the development guide and, and addressing signage in the sign ordinance. Um, I was very impressed with the pictures that are in here to see how many really nice signs we do have around town. And that um, you have examples of things that you'd like to encourage. I think that that's really a great idea. I, I support this. I did have a question about um, the last page, the buttercup one, it says um, indirect illumination gooseneck type. I'm assuming that the light is above shining down, not below shining up. Um, and then also um, in the sign ordinance, I know it says that you have to have, if you have it illuminated from inside, I guess I'm confused about, we have a sign ordinance and now we have this development guide and why can't they be one? But um, the, um, when signs are illuminated from inside, in the sign ordinance it says they need to be opaque, which means that the background of it needs to be dark and the letters can be lighter. And we have such a mix in the city now from old signs and new signs, but I just want to make sure that the sign ordinance we have is still going to be followed. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, Mike Drebisch, Placerville. I think the, the final product here is excellent. The photos, the language, everything. And the discussion was make the development guide language on should, may and all that reflect exactly what the or sign ordinance says so if it's illegal or if it's legal then the language needs to be as it is looks like here in the design guidelines so great job staff on the pictures and the language where's the discussion of a-frames or is that going to be coming up because um, if those are going to in the future be allowed then they need to have some kind of style forced upon them to fit into the historic district. Right now they're illegal. All the little menu boards out on the sidewalk, little A-frames. Um, as for making this part of the sign ordinance, Planning Commission can make a recommendation to City Council to at least reference the design guidelines, historic area. And I do like the clickable links in here where you can click over to directly what the sign ordinance says, what's allowed, what isn't. So that's another excellent job. Otherwise, looks good. All right, thank you. Any other comment from the public at this time? If not, we'll close public comment. Um, discussion? Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the uh, suggestion that the sign ordinance could have a reference to the uh, uh, design guideline that we have here. Um, and from my understanding, that this has no bearing on a change of enforcement of the uh, sign ordinance. It simply provides uh, some direction for applicants when they're uh, contemplating a, uh, a sign that is um, much more descriptive than the regulatory uh, prohibition approach that the sign ordinance take. The sign ordinance predominantly just says, here's what you can may not do. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to do this, it has to be within these narrow parameters. This is providing ideas, suggestions. I think it's providing the context that the ordinance doesn't have. So it's compatible from my perspective to the ordinance itself. Um, with regards to A-frames, A-frames I believe are presently prohibited by the signed ordinance, but then when the economy uh, turned south, the city said, you know, we're, we're not gonna, the merchants are having uh, uh, such a difficult time as it is. Does it really make sense for us to go after them for these? And we see there is quite a proliferation of the A-frames, uh, frankly, with, with no detriment to the um, 
to the use of the, uh, the, uh, the downtown area that I can determine, and I think it would be worth giving some consideration to perhaps, as was suggested, providing some uh, 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 relaxation of the prohibition on the A-frames, and then at the same time also providing some parameters for which they can be used. Um, I, I realize that the, uh, my understanding was that the A-frame uh, prohibition was originally uh, based upon uh, the occasional inability to open a car door when you pull up next to the um, out of the curb or interfering with the skateboarders on the sidewalk but I find that the trash cans do that just as much as, as the A-frames might and so I think it would be good to take a little bit of a uh, another look at it and see if we can't strike a little bit better balance uh, for both the city as well as the merchants. I like this product. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, if uh, staff could answer a couple of the questions and discuss just a little bit about the A-frames. Um, A-frames are intentionally not included within these guidelines. These guidelines are to, as Commissioner Friend pointed out, um, to allow some flexibility in the actual design of the sign itself. The ordinance is very prescriptive on mainly the area, the size of the sign, and those kinds of matters of how it's to be allowed within a particular building based on frontage and other factors. So you have varying ages of building throughout Main Street. So this, we hope, will give the flexibility of somebody that can um, have a type of sign uh, that maybe fits more in the context of the historic time period of the particular building. And so that's why we have the design guidelines and the uh, zoning code uh, does uh, reference the development guide as being the guide that allows uh, the Planning Commission and or the City Council to have that uh, flexibility when looking at anything from the design of a particular building to the signage as being affixed to the building. So that's what this is really addressing is signage affixed to the building. A-frames, on the other, other hand, are an encroachment in the right-of-way, and they're going to be handled separately. Uh, as Commissioner Friend pointed out, A-frames are prohibited in the zoning ordinance. Um, they are an encroachment, and none of the A-frames currently on Main Street lack an encroachment permit. So really, at this point in time, there's nothing preventing the city from giving a 24-hour notice to the owner of those A-frames to have them removed, or city staff will come by with a truck, pick them up, store them at, um, at our courtyard or somewhere for the owner to pick them up. Uh, but staff has uh, backed off from that. I think there was a period of time during the early part of the Great Recession that there was a relaxation on enforcement of signs altogether, uh, um, not only because of the loss of considerable staff and we just didn't have the time to go out and do the enforcement, but it was just felt that the business owners needed that additional boost uh, just to allow for greater uh, commerce and customer activity. So that's how it was, that was the thinking then. Uh, but today, uh, staff has gotten feedback from different council members and from members of the public. So what staff will be doing is we're going to be actually trying to, uh, we're going to photograph a lot of the different encroachments in the sidewalk. So it's going to include the A-frame signs, it's going to include furniture that businesses put out on the sidewalk you know, planters, all those kinds of things. And then we're going to ask council for direction. What does the council wish for staff to do? Do they want us to allow A-frames? And maybe the council will give us direction on, on uh, proclamating some ordinance regulations of A-frames. So that's where we are on the A-frames. And again, that's why you not see them here. And that's also the help, one of the questions that a member of the public uh, had on uh, regarding A-frames. And then there was another question about the buttercup sign. Um, and I'm trying to remember exactly what the question was about. I think it, it was what the picture is trying to show is indirect illumination. And so rather than illumination being in, within the sign itself, an internally illuminated sign or an internally lit gas-filled neon tubes like the sign that's uh, shown ab above it, the uh, Ben A sign, um, those those are gooseneck signs that then shine on the sign itself, and that was 
you know, that's been a type of sign illumination that we typically saw, you know, for for many years, and in a lot of places, it's appropriate and can be attractive. So I think that's what that was meant to be, and it can be uplit or downlit. Um, I don't think this was restricting that, but it is something that you can uh, consider. Another thing, too, is while we're talking about the illumination, I just wanted to point out that uh, staff received a lot of comments when the uh, Benet sign was installed, and there were questions about, well, isn't that running afoul of our code? And so we wanted to clarify that, that internally lit neon tubes is something that uh, we want to allow. Those signs have been around. I believe neon signs have been around since uh, they became popular in the 1920s, but I believe they were even used prior to the 1920s. So they are an old type of sign. But the, uh, uh, the type of sign that, that the ordinance restricts are the, um, are the uh, fluorescent type of uh, tube lighting. So I think that, that's why we put that clarification in there. Okay, if I could, I'd like to pick up on that particular example, Pierre, because in addition to uh, the, the type of material that's used there, I think the other question, though, that it raises with, with that particular sign is the placement on the Highway 50 side in the visual corridor, as opposed to being on Main Street. And, and then if, you, if we were to have all of the businesses that have a back against Highway 50, and that's a scenic corridor highway, and, and whether they were using these signs or something else, is, is that something that we would want as the visual along Highway 50, and then I, I, I could see a, a, a conflict with the Christmas trees, for example, and the other things. So I, I'm, I'm just wondering if perhaps that's, that needs to be reviewed. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not taking a position on it for sure, but I mean, that was the one thing actually, it's an attractive sign, don't get me wrong, but it's also a singular element there. And, and then if you had a whole bunch, of, a whole string of those, it, it might be different. So I'm just wondering if maybe staff needs to have some discussion uh, internally on, on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Thank you for that comment. Any other comments or questions or discussion at this time? Do we need, does anybody have a motion to send this to city council? Clarification. Yes. We're making a recommendation to the city council based on what we have here or, or the information that you have received tonight and then you'll come back to us. Is that the way it's going to work? No, what, what, what SAF is proposing is you would then, you're going to consider the recommended changes made by staff. You can certainly add or modify as you see fit as part of your motion. You can also direct staff then to look at anything else, and we can certainly bring that up with the, uh, with the city council. And if it's substantive, it may come back to you, but we try to keep these changes for the most part not substantive, just just to bolster uh, the absence of having some good design guidelines to address more specifically signs be placed on buildings within the, the hopefully the future historic corridor of Main Street. A lot of the buildings are, if, if, if they're on the historic register, then they have to come in for permitting. But a lot of the buildings currently, if they're not on our historic inventory, then if their signage meets the minimum requirements of the zoning ordinance, then they're essentially allowed by right unless that building had other types of discretionary actions on it already, like a master sign plan or a site plan review or something of that nature. Yeah, I, I guess I would just feel more comfortable if I saw a finished product before I recommended to the city council. That's, that's where I'm coming from. I, I kind of feel like this was this was the f the first look at this revision, and I've heard a number of things that that we have asked for, and a couple from the community, and I, I'd like to see how it's incorporated before we make a before I make a recommendation or before we make a recommendation to the city. That's that's my point. Staff can certainly do that. Then staff would recommend that your your motion will be to give us 
some more specific direction on some of the changes you would like to see and then we will go back um, and uh, come with some some changes that we can bring back to you and recommend uh, that you consider for the council well go ahead well we've amongst us we've we've said some things that we would like to see changed um, do we need to put that in the form of a motion or do you have enough information Pierre yeah, I think we have at least two two uh, two things we wanted to add at this point do you have those yeah staff wants to make sure that we that we definitely address those items that you want addressed so I'm looking through my notes Corresponding um, picture with the with the numerical uh, corresponding to the picture with the ordinance, and then a referral back to the um, to the actual ordinance itself. Right, reference the picture number in in the text where appropriate, and each picture will have a figure uh, number associated with it. That's an easy. Yeah, we can certainly do that. And then Commissioner Friend was interested in having that section that, let's see, that was on the very beginning. Yeah, oh, item six, six make that the like one a, over is a, is a five a keep that, six. Yeah. keep that the language there. Is fine. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Do we want to deal with the cross-referencing to the the ordinance uh, we'll check and make sure but I'm quite sure that the ordinance does reference a development guide but if it doesn't we can certainly do that because the development guide is not an ordinance it's right. meant it's more of a design guidelines which is a little bit more difficult to prescribe you know in in code right but we'll certainly check on that I'll make a note of that So will staff uh, rework this and bring it back at a future date? Yes, we will do that. Okay. So the appropriate action for this item would be to okay. bring it back uh, at a future date uh, revised um, it's not even an amendment um, revised uh, development guide for our approval at that time okay. yes and just for my fellow commissioners I'm I'm happy with with staff being able to take the changes that we suggest I think they're relatively minor I would be happy with with adopting the document as it is and, and the changes we, we've offered and, and then have staff move it forward I personally don't necessarily need to see it come back with there was nothing substantive from from my perspective mm -hmm. so I don't know how the rest of the Commission feels on that I'd be happy to move it forward no, I'm you want to see it okay yeah yep we'll bring it back in a later date thank you okay item 5.2 um, zoning text amendments front yard fencing walls and use restrictions this is a, a zone change 10.2 staff report please thank you mr. chairman um, to give it a little background basically what staff is is, is recommending uh, that the uh, we're recommending that the Planning Commission would consider these text amendments to title 10 so that's the Placerville zoning ordinance and then we have chapter 4 which are uh, termed general regulations and basically modifying chapter 10-4-3 and we would add the definition of a, rec of a recreational vehicle to section 10-1-4. Uh, dash and for the most part, these changes are only directed at the front yard of residential zone districts. Uh, staff and city council members have received uh, complaints over many years of certain uses 
uh, that are um, occurring within the front yard setback and typically looking at uh, 20 feet from the road right of way into the property so it wouldn't it wouldn't affect beyond that 20 feet or whatever that uh, scheduled setback is for the zone district and um, so some of these issues include like parking in the front lawns uh, use of the front yard for storage of equipment um, and so by consensus the council uh, directed staff some years ago in fact I believe this was uh, this first came before the Planning Commission back in November of 2010 and I believe Commissioner friend you were uh, present and part of those uh, earlier hearings when, when this was considered but these amendments are basically designed to prohibit the following uh, storage of vehicles, boats, RVs, equipment, et cetera, within the required front yard setback, except in the designated driveway. And I've also stated there via permitted encroachments. Uh, we do have some situations in the city where uh, folks will be driving over the sidewalk and creating an unpermitted encroachment. And that's what we mean by that. So if it's an actual you know, driveway, via um, uh, uh, legal encroachment, then that's permitted, of course. And then the other item that we're looking at is uh, the construction and placement of uh, fences. And it's kind of interesting, because I think Placerville, at least it's the only jurisdiction I know of that it would allow a, a six foot solid uh, fence, uh, heads or otherwise wall, uh, on, on the uh, edge of the right of way, right in the right within the front yard setback at the, at the front of the property line. So most jurisdictions only allow a solid fence up to about 30 inches, and then a fence can go up to the full six feet, uh, but it would be at least 50% open. Um, El Dorado County, for example, that's the um, fence regulations that they place within residential zones um, uh, in their ordinance, and I think most jurisdictions also have that. I couldn't find any that, did, that didn't have something similar uh, to that. And so uh, what you see then in the staff report is Exhibit A, and that again, that's shown as underlined in strikeouts. For, so for the most part, it's underline is showing uh, the added language in the code And then we have the findings, of course, you would make in Exhibit uh, B if you concur with these uh, recommended findings. And then we showed some pictures in Exhibit C. Uh, some of these are located within the city of Placerville, some, some are not, but they provide examples of, of what some of the complaints have been, and mainly a lot of cars. Or you can have the situation say on, and we've, we've marked this one. So if you look at image five, for example, we've got a solid fence. And if you get a lot of uh, neighbors in a row uh, where all of a sudden the fences are solid, you get that kind of a fortress kind of a look. Um, a good example of that and where it is permitted would be, for example, if you're traveling down Cambellic. But Cambellic, the reason why you see the six foot solid fence along Cambellic is those are subdivisions where the interior roadway, then they have the front yards all within. And so that would apply then to the interior of the subdivision where uh, when that subdivision was approved, they wanted to be able to have the side or rear yard that abuts that arterial uh, to be allowed to have a fence. So there are those situations where uh, this, this typically would not apply. And then looking at uh, the very bottom there, image six, uh, that's, we've received a number of complaints about that. That's a contractor storage yard that currently exists. Mind you, if this ordinance does, does um, uh, go into play and becomes uh, the law of the land, uh, this would be a legal non-conforming use. We're not gonna go after or change people that have already constructed or already have a, a, um, constructed their fences and, and, and the like. So this would only apply to new fences. Of course, it would retroactively apply to the parking of vehicles and RVs and boats within the front yard setback. So with that, I hope you've had a chance to look over these uh, recommended changes to our code. And at that point, I'm happy to answer any questions you have at this time. Just a couple questions on Exhibit C. Did you say that these were photos um, 
linked to current complaints, specific complaints uh, at these addresses? Some of these photographs, Some of these photographs were <coughs> taken within the city. Within the city, um, image one and image two are not in the city. Image three is not in the city. Image four is on Coloma Street. Uh, image five is on Coloma Street, and image six is on Coloma Street. So image five is showing an example of where you have a fence is approximately 30 inches in height. And that's typically what, what you would see in the front yard. And I guess I'll direct, I guess the best way to say it is, um, turning to page two of your staff report, um, staff reviewed a lot of different cities. And one of the cities we looked at was the city of Albany. And they do have a, a design review guidelines um, that's similar to what we have. And they actually have a, a design review guidelines for residential additions and new homes. And one of the things that caught our, our eye of staff was, was they really consider the front yard a very important part of maintaining the integrity of a neighborhood. And I, we quoted this. It says, the front yard is the house's contribution to the street. Uh, staff agrees with that. Um, you know, the commission may or may not fully agree with that. But I think is it, it, it is very important. Uh, the, ma the maintenance and aesthetic conditions of the front yard can affect an entire neighborhood. And so if you see somebody that uh, decides rather than having you know, working on their car on a side or in the rear of the yard. If they're doing it in the front yard, that can have a detrimental effect. At least that's been conveyed to staff over the years, and so that's why we decided to uh, move forward with these changes. So these photos were generated by specific complaints, I guess is my, my question, or was it just? Um, some of them, yes, and some of them, no. Some of those pictures are taken um, outside of the city, and so right. there were no complaints associated with them. One of the images is, is an image, of, of course, we want to show an image of a, a positive fence rather than a, a fence that we're looking to further regulate. So image five has your basic fence that would meet uh, the, the recommended uh, regulations where image six would not of course you have a fence that's solid up to six feet in height image four you have a solid hedge that uh, this exceeding six feet in height um, and then the other ones also then you're seeing the storage of vehicles and an RV in the front yard what, one, one last quick question um, image six um, is that property zone residential or is it it's zoned residential. It is residential R1 something? Okay. Um, I, I well, believe so. I'd have, I'd have to check, but okay. it is residential. zoned. Okay. All right. Thank you. I image three. Can you tell me staff's position on image three? Image three is a uh, solid fence. It looks like it's approximately six feet in height, and it's within the front yard setback. It looks gorgeous. It is. It's very, it is very nice. Beautiful. This, this is beautiful. Yet, if I understand correctly, and, and we'll get into discussion later, but I, I just want to make sure I understand that the ordinance, as or the text amendments as, a, as proposed, would prohibit this. It would prohibit that. They, they could do a solid fence, but the solid fence would have to be 20 feet back from the right of way. Yet, this is very attractive. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So, thank, thank so let me understand this. I have three vehicles parked in my front yard right now, supposedly, okay. And before this ordinance goes in, if I put up a fence across there, I can keep those vehicles. You would, you would be able to park the vehicles in your designated driveway, but you wouldn't be able to park the vehicles in the, in the front yard but and store them there, I'll park them on the my, lawn. My point is we're going after the vehicles, but we're not going after the, we're not going after the fences uh, in the in the way that you stated it was that you're gonna you'll enforce not parking vehicles off of driveways either asphalt concrete or, or or stone but a wooden fence that that's clear across the front of the property can remain in a sense grandfathered in yes if somebody uh, constructed a six foot solid fence it's grandfathered in, it was legally placed. Because right now there's no prohibition on having a six foot solid fence or wall at the property line within the front yard. The new ordinance would, it would allow for up to 30 inches, I believe, 
uh, solid, and then you can still go up to six feet, but it will have to be 50% open. And that's universal with every jurisdiction I've looked at. Commissioner, we could simply move this item to table and bring it back from table at our leisure <laughs> if you want to get your fence in. <laughs> Any other questions for staff at this time? Okay, let's open this for public comment. Again, um, item 5.2 on the agenda. Actually, Chairman, oh. uh, I, have, I do have one more Excuse question. Excuse me, one, I, yeah. I apologize. Um, on Exhibit A, uh, uh, 2 uh, C, other structures not exceeding 30 inches in height, uh, what does that refer to? Is that just any other type of material that would constitute a wall? No, that was put in there because sometimes you'll see uh, uh, other, st other structures that are, that are low. It could be maybe an HVAC system or something of that nature could be located within the setback. If the house is right on the setback line, maybe there's some mechanical feature or something that's going to be, you know, not exceeding 30 inches in height. We don't want to say you can't put something of that nature in there, other structures. Okay. I mean, that's what that was meant to capture. Any other questions for staff at this time? Okay, let's go ahead and open this up for uh, public comment. Um, first, um, I'd like to address your comment, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Riveras. Um, the quote that you said, the front yard is the house's contri contribution to the street. Well, my contribution is my property taxes to the street. Okay, uh, my name is Mandy Winicky. I recently moved to Placerville after 20 years as a property manager and ski bum in Kirkwood, California. In Kirkwood, I worked as a certified community manager. I was contracted by an HOA and I managed a 64 unit condo complex. I know HOAs and CCR, CCNRs too well. When my husband and I were house shopping, we eliminated houses with HOAs from our search. I know firsthand the headaches and unnecessary restrictions HOAs can cause for property owners. Our new home is backed up against our property line, so most of our property is our front yard. We bought this property with the idea of having a large fence yard for our animals, toys, and privacy. My dream for my property is a sanctuary fortress. When you tell me that, I ha that having a large fence is, quote, a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the community, I say you are full of hot air. My husband is a contractor, and he depends on having his work trailer at our home. Adding these new restrictions will affect my husband's ability to conduct his business effectively. Restricting us from parking our trailer and motor toys takes away our right to the enjoyment of life in the pursuit of happiness. Taking away property rights of homeowners is part of a larger agenda. The agenda is called Sustainable Development, AKA Agenda 21. This is a plan developed by the unelected United Nations to slowly strip property owners of their rights. This plan specifically starts with small cities and re rezoning the land we own and exercising more and more power over it. All private property must be guarded as priceless freedom. Land owners should reject the, su the sustainable development the idea that only government can t protect nature, air, soil, water, and open spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Do you have any other comments from the public at this time? My name is Will Morgan. I'm a roofing contractor within the city of Placerville. And um, so I would just like to um, express my personal point of view, which is that, um, first of all, we live on Cedar Ravine Road, and all of our usable property is the front yard, because the back is the creek that runs through it. So um, 
we really don't have the option of using our backyard for anything other than privacy. Um, I own a, a dump trailer. I also own a gutter machine that is in the form of a trailer that I haul to job sites and home. And so if I don't have the opportunity to park it in my front yard, then I, I, it, it seems like that would mean I would need to spend money to, um, for a parking space at a remote location, which would be a financial hardship for me, as well as it would, um, it would hurt the, the efficiency of my workday because I would be potentially going to a remote location just to you know, get my machinery to go to a job site and then take it back to a remote location. And as an, you know, as, as, as an owner with only one full-time employee um, who works 10 to 12 hours a day as it is, I really don't want to have to do that when, when I feel like I, I own my property and I should be able to use it how I see fit. I understand that we don't want eyesores in, the, in our yards and so forth, but um, we, we keep a very clean yard, a presentable yard. Um, and and I, I want to be able to use it how I, how I need to use it. Thank you. I have a quick question uh, for you. Um, is it Will? Yes, Will. Um, so you are a contractor and you store your equipment in your yard currently, is that correct? In the, in the yard, yes. And you do you not have that yard fenced or do you have it fenced? I, was, I, I wasn't quite sure. It, we have a fence. There is a fence, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the previous gentleman was talking about having to take his trailer to another location and the extra trips that would create. And that's why I disagree with the claim for categorical CEQA exemption because the changing of this text would have zero impact on the environment. If you ban all the RVs and the trailers and everything, they're gonna have to go to storage lots somewhere and all those extra trips by people going to those storage lots. So there's a definite impact that hasn't been measured. So I disagree with the claim of categorical exemption under CEQA. Um, in regards to the front fence, to me, three feet is kind of ridiculous. Deer can go over it, dogs can go over it, people can walk over it. And if you're kind of bothered by the sight of RVs or trailers, then a four foot, a six foot fence helps to block that. And I noted that picture too, the fortress fence was absolutely gorgeous. So how would you like to see that beautiful fence 25, 30 feet back off the street? How weird would that look? Anyway, so I think the three foot fence is ridiculous. Um, and also our terrain makes fence heights kind of a problem. Because if you, you could have a six foot fence, but given the terrain, it could be completely worthless. Your neighbor's looking right down the hill into your yard. So something to consider. We're not the flat land. Um, and then as for the, the parking in the lawns and off the driveways, and why can't you just keep it simple with an ordinance that says you shall park on the driveway? I don't even know if that already exists or not. Um, why should a few bad, bad apples create a, a restriction for everyone else, right? So we are talking about private property being restricted by government with no compensation. And <laughs> I just think your borders, you don't even own the land because if you don't pay, you're a renter. If you don't pay your property taxes, it's gone. So you really don't own your land anyway, but we like to think we do. So the whole thing, I just wish you would table it forever. Um, and as for the mention to the 30 inch restriction, does that include an umbrella and table and chairs, dog house, wood shed, a nice little gazebo? What is that all about, the 30 inch restriction on other structures? So anyway, I think this should just be torn up and thrown away.
Thank you. Do we have any other? Yes, we do. Good evening, Evelyn Veerkamp, Placerville. At this point, I would primarily like to say ditto, 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 because everybody has covered um, the things that I was concerned about, so I won't repeat them. Um, I would like to know where this has come from, why the need to do this. Um, and I would like the person who's putting this forward to claim their handiwork. Something that I wasn't clear about was apparently some of the photographs that you um, have at your disposal, which I've not seen, and I'm sure they were online, so the fact that I've not seen them is my responsibility and not yours. But it's not clear to me why photographs have been included which are not inside the city of Placerville. Um, the evidence is not relevant to what you're talking about. My most fundamental question is, what limits on government power does the city of Placerville observe? I've watched what's happened in other cities, and to me, this looks like kind of encroaching on the possibility of doing more things. As at the more things that we allow government to do, and you are government, um, the more latitude that there eventually is for doing more things. For example, I've seen that in some cities, there people are being told what they can and cannot plant in their front yards. People who have vegetable gardens in their front yards are being told that they must take them out. Um, people are being told they must keep their grass green and with the price of water in Placerville. I um, have to confess that I'm an offender. My grass is no longer green. I'm not going to spend the money to keep my grass green. But I envisage the day when in support of community standards as, as defined by somebody anonymously, um, you're going to tell me I have to have green grass and I'm going to ask you to pay for it and of course you're not going to. Today I saw online and I've seen similar things before, so this is not an oddity, somebody who had a flag, an American flag in her front yard in a commemoration of the um, of Memorial Day, and she was told she should take it down, that it's not a permitted use of her yard. And I've seen that happen across the states and other places. So my most ongoing question is, how far do you give yourselves permission to go to regulate our lives? And that is really my concern. Um, I believe our private property is our private property and I don't really want you on it, and I'm not being personal, but you're telling us potentially what we can do with our private property. And I, as a native Placervillian, find that offensive. It's not what I think my city is, and I hope it does not become. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, Kathy Lishman. I think it's ridiculous to think that Placerville government is going to try to take over for everybody's lives. If the council is interested in, the, in this project, I think you need to just forward it to them and let them take the heat and make the decision. I have a question about whether permits are required now if you build a fence or if you don't need a permit. Um, and I can see the reason for doing this. I think. I think we need to make sure that we're not using our residential neighborhoods as commercial too. And um, I, I know you've heard everything against it. I think that's a little exaggerated. I think it's probably a good idea in most cases. And I like the quote better, the front yard is the house's contribution to the neighborhood. Okay, a number of uh different viewpoints there. Uh, any other comment? I think, let's see, I think we got everybody, almost. So we're gonna close public discussion at this time um, and turn off the podium mic, just in case. Do we have any discussion or comments from the commission? Just a comment. I. I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm agreeing both directions and uh, puts me in a quandary. Um, there is a house not far from me that has three vehicles parked in the driveway, two of them are up on blocks, one of them, another one is in the middle of the front yard. 
that's the kind of thing that that needs to be regulated and um, not uh, you know if if a if a man takes his trailer his construction trailer home at night and the next morning it goes back out on the job site I don't have a problem with that uh, I do have a problem when the when the trailer's been sitting there for 20 years and the blue tarp uh, has been blowing in the wind for 15 of the 20 years uh, I have a problem with that how do you separate all that uh, you know how how do you come up with an ordinance that that, uh, that puts a time frame on that I, I think that's what where 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 my quandary is comments discussion well I'll just add a few comments I, I uh, uh, sup uh, agree with that and at the end of the day we're going to have to resolve the issue of aesthetics versus property rights. Um, I'm quite sympathetic to uh, the majority opinion that was expressed here this evening, and I do think it's uh, absolutely uh, incumbent upon this body uh, to deal with the issue head on and not shirk our responsibility and simply forward it on to council, and I think that we are capable of dealing with that. And uh, I do believe that there is, in fact, um, a concern about continual uh, uh, limitations uh, being uh, put on property owners. Uh, they, you know, the, the road to wherever is paved with good intentions, um, and I understand. And I believe that there's a balance here. Uh, Albany, uh, yeah, that quote bothered me a whole lot. Uh, you can pay my taxes. Um, I'm not in the business of contributing anything. I'm in the business of enjoyment, the free use and enjoyment of my property without depriving my neighbor of the free use and enjoyment of their property. That's how it exists. Um, I don't, none of these, none of this impacts me. I don't have a, a dog in the fight today. At one time I did have a small fishing boat next to the driveway and I would certainly uh, hate to see that I would have to uh, um, put my boat someplace else and then have to drive over there wherever I stored it every time I wanted to go out and go fishing. I think that's absurd. Um, I'm, you know, people don't like some things. Uh, that, that's kind of too bad. Looking at the RV, for example, I mean, would it be better to build a structure <laughs> to house the RV? Is that less imposing than having the RV there? I'm, I'm gonna throw just a, a couple of things out. Um, again, I think we have aesthetics versus property rights that we have to, we have to resolve. Um, the use of, 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 the, of the front yard, however, however that's defined, um, as a parking lot is, is, is something that we'll just put over here. Uh, vehicles up on blocks and, and, and in various states of repair uh, on, a, on more than just a temporary basis. I don't always finish a, a, a project on, on my vehicles when I work on, on them, so they, it may be up overnight, right? Um, well, we're gonna put that over there. Uh, paved, paved or gravel is, is something that we can consider. And then we have the whole issue of the business use. So those, those seem to me to be some of the elements as kind of on the aesthetic side. And then the fence side, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not very well bothered by the, the tall fences. And, and this image three, uh, I, I think, really speaks volumes to me. This image three would run afoul of, of the ordinance as proposed. And I, and I think this is a very attractive uh, uh, piece of landscaping here. And, and somebody may want to have a, a, a private courtyard. I could totally get that. It's very common in Europe and France, uh, even in the Middle East, to have, have these courtyards, your residence. It's, it's, that, that's, that's culturally appropriate. Um, and so I don't have a problem with that. I would have an issue, however, with things right at the property line. Okay, I think, I think there's a balance there, so we can probably strike some sort of, of aesthetic balance where we can, we can meet uh, the needs of those people that, that are less enamored by what they see versus those that want to use their property the way they see fit. I would point out that Coloma Road, by the way, is also Highway 49. And that creates challenges in and of itself where you have a, a roadway coming in, in into the community, which also happens to be a state highway. Wow, and, and a lot of the examples, as we heard this evening, come along Coloma Road, come along Highway 49, 
and gee, maybe maybe there's a kind of a, a special case in point with, with all the traffic and noise and, and, and so on and so forth. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna offer anything quite yet. Um, I just wanted to throw a few ideas out there for my fellow commissioners to, uh, to perhaps consider. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, a couple of thoughts. <clears throat> uh, I think one of, one of our uh, uh, guests tonight had mentioned the fact that their front yard is really their only place to actually socialize, to be able to, you know, whether it's their kids or their dogs. And I think that's typical of a lot of properties in Placerville where you have maybe there's a, a hill in your backyard or you have quite a, almost not a zero lot line, but a, a pretty small backyard where the front yard is really the, the place where a family can gather. Um, and to the extent that you're able to have some privacy, um, even if it is the front yard, uh, I think it's something that we need to balance. Um, on the other hand, I think we all know properties that, ha that are abusers of multiple cars on lawns that sit for months, maybe years in driveways that I can think of one that I think is running a, a, a wood chipping service or uh, logs that are just sit out in, in their driveway for, for months. And you know, if I'm the neighbor and I'm maybe looking to sell, you know, that's gonna impact my value of my property. And so you know, there, there's another thing about being a good neighbor to your neighbor uh, and not, um, you know, having an eyesore that's in front. And so, you know, those are the things that I think we need to balance. I don't think we're quite there yet. I think there's a lot to be able to take in on that. I almost would almost want to even separate some of this to have a discussion on just fences and one just on parking, uh, because I think they both come with a lot of different discussion items and, um, you know, and we might be able to agree on one thing on, and you know, still have more conversations on one as opposed to putting them together. So I don't know if that's something we can look at where we separate the two um, so that we can have maybe a, a, a separate ordinance, if you will, for, for both of them, I don't know. So I, I think a bifurcation is an excellent idea. I had thought about that earlier, uh, Commissioner. And Mr. Chairman, just, and just a couple other comments. Uh, the, other, the other part of this, that, that, the, how it strikes me is uh, is the imposition, citywide imposition of CCNRs. And, and as one of the, the speakers said is, you make a choice whether you want to live in a community where there's an HOA and CCNRs or not, okay? And, and there are reasons people choose each direction. And I'm very, very concerned about the city trying to impose, and I've said this before when this item came before, trying to impose CCNRs citywide. I'm, you know, there's, there's an example, I, another example I can cite, and this gets to the aesthetic piece. Uh, and, and I know someone who is, uh, they're completely changing their front yard, okay, and they've torn out all their landscaping, and they're completely replacing it with basically piles of, of rocks and, and bricks and things. And, and to me, it kind of looks very Arizona-ish or New Mexico-ish. Okay, you know what? That's their right to do it. I don't particularly care for it but it's their right to do it. I think we could get to something about the commercial business, no commercial business, and we're not gonna preclude people from engaging commercial business. You're allowed, unless, except for those CCNRs that prohibit it, you're allowed to have a home-based business and commercial enterprise, so long as you do not deprive your neighbors the fair and legitimate use of their property, right? And you're not, you're not uh, conducting retail in a residential area, those kinds of things. So I, I, I think that we, it, we this is a very important issue. I think it's one that we will need to take some time to tackle, and, and I would support the bifurcation or splitting out however needs to happen to really kind of work through it and, and brought, start provide some direction. Yeah, I'd like to, to look at some of these issues. I mean, some of the, the topics that were brought up, um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of a vehicle code that says you, you cannot have a, a non-functioning vehicle in a certain spot for more than X number of hours or days or a certain number of vehicles on, in, in, uh, at certain properties. I'm assuming there's no, uh, noise ordinances where I can't imagine somebody having a, uh, a log chipping uh, you know, maybe a lumber, whatever, uh, portable lumber yard in our in our next yeah in our in our next door neighbor's yard. Uh, there's got to be some you know uh, ordinance about uh, 
vehicles or or uh, structures or landscaping or lack of landscaping being a blight on the neighborhood and, and as michael said you know if i buy a piece of property i i should be able to do with it what i want but again you know my right to swing my fist ends at somebody else's nose and we've got to have you know that delineation where uh, you know, painting my house, you know, fluorescent pink with black trim, you know, I have a right to do that, but do I have a right to affect, you know, my, my uh, next door neighbor's uh, property values? Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I think it, I would like to, uh, as Michael suggested, uh, maybe separate some of these issues, because I think some of these issues, if we get into it a little bit, we'll see that there is, uh, regulations, uh, ordinances in place uh, that are going to answer some of our questions. And some of them are not gonna be black and white. Some of them are gonna be very different uh, shades of, of gray. Um, looking back at some of these, I mean, we've got the two photos from you know, outside the city, city limits, El Dorado County. Um, the one that looks like I'm sure they had uh, a landscape architect or some professional somebody in some professional capacity develop that it looks it looks very sleek and modern I mean I wish my photinias would grow that high because I've got you know I've got a, a side yard that uh, uh, people don't need to see me you know having a, a barbecue on the side and I don't need to see people running up and down the uh, uh, my street at 60 miles an hour um, and for mr. Um, Mr. Morgan, I go past his place of business probably 20 times a week. Um, and the only thing I've noticed is that he's done some remodeling on his house in the past few years. I think there's been an addition. And um, when you said the gutter, I thought, oh, yeah, I know right where that property is because there is a relatively, there was a fence there, and I think it was added to relatively recently within the past few years. And on, and on Cedar Ravine, I can't imagine, you know, having that kind of equipment, not only for the equipment's protection, but for your safety, because I know how many people, I mean, we've got a, um, a quote-unquote neighbor up the street who has probably 20 uh, cement pillars in their front yard, and every once in a while you see one of them gets dinged because somebody has gone right there don't know if that's code don't, don't know if they got it permitted but I can certainly see why they would have that so I can see there's you know so many shades of gray and it just sometimes you have to look at it and say okay is this really impacting uh, the neighbors in a negative fashion uh, and you say well okay I'm protecting my property I'm doing with my property what what I should have the right to do and if it's not um, a blight uh, on the neighborhood you know our we're a, we're a complaint driven organization. And that's why I was asking about what, which of these photos were actually uh, driven by a complaint from the public? Who was complaining about, you know, the, the architectural landscape? Who was complaining about, well, you know, it looks like it's a commercial um, yard there, but it's got a fence so nobody knows what's behind it. You know, again, the Fotinia hedge, you know, kudos to you. Maybe I don't want to see what's behind that hedge. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, there should be some, maybe some delineation of certain of these issues and we can address them singularly or, or together. Okay, I, Pierre, I, I, I'm reading the language here and I'm not entirely sure I understand. Uh, so I'm in Roman numeral one, on page four of six of the staff report. Uh, so C, capital C, fences, walls, and hedges and yards, correct? So the, the second half of this where it talks about provided that in all residential zones such fence not higher than three feet, yada, yada, that's dealing with sight distance, right, for, for parcels on the corner. That, that, that's what that's talking about, the second half of C1. That's what that's dealing with, right? That's sight distance for correct. For okay, but the first part says... A fence wall or hedge not higher than six feet above natural ground level may be located on, on the required yards. Now, I don't understand the word required there. And then this, to me, looks like we're already permitting uh, fences, walls, and the hedges up to six feet. 
Yeah, you know, you pointed something out that uh, there, there should have been a strikeout in there. Ah, good. So so far, yeah, so that was I a support good, that was a very good presented. catch. Mr. Chairman, we can take a C1 look. is the uh, current language in the code. Right. Okay. So, so C2 and 3 that's underlined, that's what's proposed to be added. Okay, I, I, I get you there. So now, so, now, now, yes. I'm on, now I can be on the same page as part of my analysis. Yeah, staff apologizes for that oversight. Okay, but you. there should have been a, a clarification and a strikeout in that first section under C1. All right. Because basically when you're saying bifurcate uh, um, the two issues, meaning the fences versus uses in the front yard, well, this is under the section yard, and so okay. we All wouldn't right. put it in another section of okay. the code. And we, we may have to just rewrite be, the whole thing. It would be just C1 or C2 or C3, and that's okay. what we sort of tried to do here. All right, great. Okay, so that helps me a lot because yeah, I was thanks, thanks really for that, confused. Um, um, the, I'll, I'll just throw just, just something else out just for our consideration. I don't know that we have any direction yet in terms of how we want to tackle this this beast, but uh, there might be a relationship between setback and height of fence. For example, I would oppose, I would oppose a six-foot fence right at at the property line. I, I think that can be a problem. I, for for an artificial fence, you know, man-made fence, I have less concern about natural fences, hedges, for example. That doesn't bother me quite as much. But you know, we we can. We could work that that back and back and forth, um, and then I had another thought that I lost. It'll it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, geez, I'm sorry, I lost it. Any other discussion or comment? I I like the comment you said uh, you made about the setback versus height. My only question is if I again plant those you know two foot uh, photinia were good, and then ten years they're you know six feet seven feet eight feet high and then well, all yeah a, yeah so so i mean I, I guess how i would i would try oh so I, there was something else how I, I would try to solve that would be depending on how how close they are to your property line right to the property line they can grow to certain a certain height and you i mean you you would just have to know that that if i think these are going to get this high i better not plant them as close to the property line <laughs> because then I could have a problem. Is that kind of you know, make sense? But I mean, if but if you planted them <clears throat> X number of feet back and they continue to grow, well, boom, they you know they can grow up and, and that's okay. Um, the, the and I'll just throw this out because again I don't know where we're going, but the the business uses is kind of tangential to this. It it, it, it you know it's, it's interesting. It's it's a peripheral discussion, but. I don't, I don't have too much of a, of a problem limiting commercial activity or, or, or restricting commercial activity from the front yard. If is you know, I don't want to restrict somebody from having, you know, having their home based business or whatever. I mean, Lord knows. M no, Mr. Chairman of Staff, can yeah. maybe comment on that. First of all, this Please. this section of the code is is basically restricting um, uses as far as you know, encroachments within the yard setback. We're not discussing home occupations and business activities in commercial zones. That would be a separate issue. Yeah. yeah but I, essentially, I, I, uh, residents are allowed um, commercial uses, what we would call a home occupation, if it's not changing the residential character and impacting the neighborhood. So somebody having, like for example, I think somebody had mentioned about a wood lot. Well, that commercial activity is is not permitted in a residential zone, period, regardless of, of your evaluation here of fences and parking of vehicles within right. the front yard. I, I, a wood I, lot or other yes. commercial activities, it's a residential zone. It doesn't allow commercial uses. Just, okay. I just want to make that okay. clear, Fair. and we're not, we're not meaning to have a discussion on yeah. commercial uses in residential zones. Right. And I'm not trying to muddy the water. And I guess, I guess we wouldn't necessarily have to consider the parking of the equipment used for business. And in one of the examples we had, the construction equipment, I think there were two examples, I think, of construction equipment being being parked there. The, the commercial use is not happening there at the property, but the parking of the equipment mm -hmm. is in support of the commercial use. So that's kind of getting back to, to the business. Yeah, it's thing. more of where the vehicles are being okay. parked. I we mean, they'd be allowed to park in the backyard or in the side yard, just right. not within that 20 feet Right. 20 foot swath of front yard um, 
along the pro property line fr from the edge of the r right of way. Right. But in the same token, though, I want to point out that somebody can't use their property as a as a yard for a commercial business. Mm -hmm. They can't have a right. fleet of vehicles in their residential zone. Right. If right. somebody were to complain about that, then that'd be a code violation. Right. Right. Separate issue. Yeah. Well, I, again, I think that gets back to what the chairman said, which is we may have other ordinances that will take into account some of these concerns that we have, but it's a matter of, yeah, marrying these up to maybe make it a little bit more cohesive. Yeah, staff would recommend that the, that the commission really count, uh, really focus in on what we're trying to get at here. And that, I mean, if you're, if, if this commission is fine with solid fence right at the property line as currently allowed in the code, then make that recommendation to the council. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the council that directed staff to come back and address these complaints. And mainly they were dealing with the fences and the storage of equipment, vehicles, boats, RVs, and the like in the front yard. And so that's, that's all this is doing. Uh, you can certainly recommend we can take that out. Staff internally discuss the differences between, say, a solid vents or wall and a hedge. Because in a lot of cases, you may have natural vegetation that's right there. Well, we're not going to require somebody to remove natural ve vegetation if they plant plants and shrubbery that grow to large height. You know, maybe that's not really an issue. Maybe we're only looking at an actual constructed structure, a fence or wall, if, if you will, as I opposed to planting that. a vegetation. So we, we, we were massaging that, but because the original ordinance had hedge in there, you know, not to be six feet, we went ahead and kept it in. Okay. But I want to throw it out that that is something that staff was discussing as well. And that's why we included that photograph of that hedge on Columbus Street. That's image number four. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Fotinia is actually quite attractive. And, you know, maybe natural, a natural barrier is, is okay. And we can certainly forward that to the uh, council for their consideration to just restrict the height limitations as far as the solid and 50% open to the structure, a fence or wall versus landscaping. Uh, and I'm not question. even sure. I mean, if you look at that Coloma Street photo, there could be a chain link fence hiding behind that Fotinia. Sure. What would you rather look at, the, the chain link fence and whatever's behind it or the natural shrub? That's an open fence. Yeah, <laughs> chain link That's fence 100 would be 50% open. Fence, boy, open. There you go. So you could have a 50, you could have <laughs> yeah. a chain link fence up to six feet mm -hmm. at, at the the very edge of the front yard. Mm -hmm. um, and I think somebody an mentioned, yeah, there was another uh, question that, too that that, that makes me th think of is what permits are required for fencing? You know, really none unless that fence, unless you have a retaining wall, of course, then it may require a permit. But any fence over six feet in height would require a permit. Okay. Uh, so right now, if it, well, there's there's no requirement for a fence. I'll, I'll I'll direct my my comment or question to the commission. So if you if you start at at the property line, so that's zero setback, right? First of all, I, my my inclination would be that that if you are set back six feet, a six foot fence wouldn't bother me at all. Okay, so a foot so a foot per a foot of fence per foot of setback. So that, that's measurable, right, and standardized. I, I wouldn't have any problem with that whatsoever. Um, the max being the max being six foot. Okay. I'd go max six foot fence max, and with and, and the height of the fence could be no more than 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 the, the the setback foot foot per foot. Okay, so I, I I would be happy I'd be happy to do that. And then I, um, and then you know if you had natural vegetation or, or a hedge, I guess if you had a hedge. If you had a hedge, you'd have to keep it trimmed then to that six foot, that that six foot level, right? Uh, as for natural vegetation that just is just in, endemic and in, or indigenous, I don't even know if we want to address that. Well, I wouldn't even call that a hedge. Hedge is something that somebody planted. Um, it's it's organized, it's orchestrated. However, you want to discuss that. Um, so with that, I I I could I could live with that. That I think. The fencing seems to me to be the easier piece of this to deal with, and that, that's perhaps the direction I would go. With regards to, to the vehicles, I think there, there are two pieces to that. One is this the issue of what looks like disrepair and abandonment, and you would otherwise 
have to abate it, right? That, that, that's, one, that's one piece. Um, the other is, is the use of quote unquote yard for, for, for parking. And, and, you know, and I'm, I'm uncomfortable again putting restrictions, but, you know, I, I, would, I would say if you've got a paved area, and I'm, I'm looking at, for example, image number one. And who knows? This this may have been a, a graduation party that people were at. I don't know what this what's going on here, right? Um, but let's let's assume for sake of discussion that this is the day to day normal appearance. Um, what, what's the difference if where those vehicles are parked was was paved or gravel? I mean, you know, wh why do we care if if the vehicles are not up on blocks? They they don't look like they're abandoned. <clears throat> They don't have spider webs running from the fenders to the ground, and, and they're not covered in leaves and dirt and yada yada. So, you know, that, that's kind of a clean without the appearance of abandonment, or, or you know. Uh, why, why, do, why do we care about that? So that, that leads to well, perhaps the, the condition is, you know, um, vehicles, and, and I, I, would, I would include the boats, and I'm, I'm really opposed to, uh, limp, you know, preventing people from parking their boat. I'll talk, deal with the RV separate. Um, if it's if it's on it's on paved or gravel, okay. Why why do we necessarily care? Um, I, I I don't think it's our business to to be dictating that, frankly. So I think we could deal with a lot of the the parking by having that parameter and prohibiting prohibiting the parking of vehicles on 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 grant on on grass or landscaped areas and and um, certainly things that are, that are. Um, in, in various states of repair for long if we need to put a, a time period or something. It gets a little, a little bit dicey, but we may have to deal with that. Um, I think that's kind of the direction I'm, I might be uh, willing to consider. Any other discussion? I'm, uh, I'm looking at this thinking um, C2 subsection D, I would, I would assume that there's some sort of vehicle code that would in, enforce this, but maybe I'm, I'm not correct. Okay. So have you crafted? No, no, well, no, I, 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 I'd prefer, I'd prefer to, to get some sense from where everybody else is. I don't want to throw a motion out there to have it die for lack of a second or, you know, nobody really supports it, but I'm, I'm just kind of throwing out. I'm truly trying to strike a balance between the aesthetic concerns as well as the, the private property rights and the other things that I, I mentioned earlier. And um, well, let's, I, get a, let's get a, uh, just a general feel. Just on the vehicles, or just no everything, the, the, the whole the, the um, whole agenda item. Where do we want to go with this? I'm I'm concerned about having a sort of height. Well, I I think the height requirement's fine. The, the, the six feet. Um, I am concerned about not allowing somebody to have a, a solid fence if their only means of outside recreation would be their front yard if they don't have a backyard, mm -hmm. uh, and so that they would have some amount of privacy unless unless there's a public safety issue that I'm not aware of um, and that either PD or the fire department have weighed in on. Uh, barring that, um, I, I think to Commissioner Friend's point of having at least I think I'm okay with at least a six foot setback so you're not literally stark in the front of, of your property line. Um, I do think we're gonna see cases come forward uh, for variances on this more than likely, um, especially if, if you have, like myself, that has a large sort of retaining wall in the front. And if I wanted to put another, you know, another fence above that, it, maybe not myself, but there could be somebody along that Coloma High you know, corridor that has something uh, similar to that. Um, in terms of the parking, I personally 
you know, don't want to see a bunch of cars parked, uh, you know, up on grass, um, or if they're, you know, people are storing their vehicles uh, or their uh, commercial vehicles, you know, if it goes out during the day and comes back at night, I don't think that's bothering anybody. If they had six there, you know, that's a whole different story. And I think that comes down to enforcement um, as opposed to uh, a more prescriptive approach to it. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. So, I, I just want to add the point that I, I don't oppose a solid fence. I, I don't, doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. And I believe our current limitation on fence height is six feet, correct? That's correct. Yeah, so we do, we do have that. So we, we, I'm not proposing extending that. You could probably put o an open structure on top of something like the uh, brick wall. Uh, the other thing, um, it might be, we could also possibly consider for the, uh, the commercial vehicles, again, I, I, I offer this reluctantly and, and uh, with some trepidation, but again, if you have, you, you could use, we're allow the fence up to six feet with a six foot setback. And then if you have your commercial vehicles, I mean, you, ha you must put a fence up then to shield to shield that provide the the aesthetic shielding so we we could even go so far we could address the the commercial vehicle uh piece with this um then it, it comes to I, I concur completely with i don't want people it doesn't look good and, and property values are a piece of this without question okay um people parking their cars on the lawn okay it does look bad i, I get that and, and that that is something I think that we is it's not an unfair balance now that doesn't preclude somebody from saying you know what we got a we, we have a drought and we don't have a reliable source of water and so I'm taking out all my grass and I'm just gonna pave it or gravel it okay well I just got one I got one big contiguous driveway now mm -hmm. that's what I got I, you know what I, I I think that's kind of their right to do that you know it's kind of where we live if somebody wants to buy my water like <clears throat> as one of the speakers said so um, I think that kind of flexibility. When we're talking about commercial vehicles, what what are we talking about? Are we talking about the uh, uh, the ten wheel semi? See, so we have to mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have to put some kind of a we get into vehicle code as far as what type of what type of commercial vehicle is allowed or isn't allowed. Um, you know, I'm I'm thinking this young lady out here that. It says, you know, it's my property, I'll do what I want. Granted, I, I agree with you, but if it infringes upon my, me being your neighbor, then, you know, where, you know, where's the end of my nose? Where's, where's the end of your nose? That's, you know, that's where I am with that. I, um, th this whole, <laughs> this whole deal of, of parking, you know, has to be on gravel. Uh, my neighbor took care of that. They just don't water their lawn, so all they have is gravel. So they park everywhere. Okay, so so what do you do about that? Uh, you can't say I'm they're parking on the lawn because there isn't any lawn. You know, so how do we how how do we make it work so it's it it doesn't interfere with the person that legitimately wants to use their yard. And but it doesn't fear. Uh, interfere with the person that is abusing their yard mm -hmm. and abusing it in such a way that affects their neighbor and and that's that's where I am right. with that. I, yeah that's the that's the gray I mean is it you know I was thinking of the vehicles that I've had and the businesses I've had you know it's, it's a it's an f-150 it's a 250 it's a 350 you know king cab it's a it's a 450 with a flatbed and then all of a sudden you get to yeah I'm not sure how many is it one vehicle is it two vehicle there's no, I don't know, as far as I can tell, there's no, um, you know, pat answer to that. Is this, we, we so is this? A, we lived in a neighborhood in Southern California where a, a guy had taken out his front yard and, and literally he pulled his semi in every night across to, in front of his garage. And so you drive down the street and here's a semi. Right. You know, I can't see the house. All you can see is a semi sitting out there. You know, is, is that what we want? I don't think so. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Yeah. Do we want him to be able to park his vehicle on his property? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so how do we separate that? I. 
I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm going to take, is, I'm is gonna, this, I'd like to, if is, I may. Is okay. this something that we're going to be able to work with? That Eventually, can we, can I think. We, well, eventually, well, I think we're going to be able to work with eventually, tonight. Eventually, I think. Or, or oh, are we going to be able we, to craft this uh, I don't into think a motion? Tonight. Yeah. I think we need okay. more time. We have, okay. we have to bring it back. We, I, I'm going to, since you're off camera and off mic, I'm going to just ask by a, a nod of your head, and I can repeat it in the microphone. Um, does uh, do you only need a Class C license to operate your equipment? Class Class a Class C license. So a Class A, and and he's indicating in the affirmative, it's a Class C. So that's like what we all have to drive our vehicles. Whereas a Class A is your your semi, your your tractor trailer. So so there would be an objective way, I think, to separate that out. And I think these are some of the things that we kind of have to tackle. Um, and it may also be that uh, if, if people, like in your neighbor's case, hey, if you want to, if you want to do that, if you want to use what would otherwise be, is is you're you're using, how do I say this? So it's, you have an atypical use. You're you're using what would norm, normally be uh, designed as the landscape portion, but you're using it to put vehicles. Okay. Um, Nobody really wants to see that, so you got to put up your six-foot fence set back six feet. Now, if you require that, how many people are going to put up that fence or are simply going to say, hmm, I guess we're not going to park all those cars there anymore, right? So maybe we can come at it the back way, um, but and, and I just think we're going to have to be creative. What we may need to do is go away look at this, come up with some ideas. Because I, I, I am getting the sense, Mr. Chairman, that we're all of sort of a similar mindset right now. Uh, we want to solve it, um, and generally in kind of the same kind of an approach. So uh, for what it's worth. Thank you. Any other comment at this time? So let's... Um, Let's bring this item uh, again to the, do we need uh, any more than two weeks for input um, on the language of this? I think it depends on your staff. It's staff's understanding that we're not coming back with any changes to make. We're gonna allow the commissioners to review and maybe come with some solutions that you feel would be appropriate for further discussion in the next meeting. Therefore, correct. staff can come back in two weeks. Correct. Is that, my, is that correct? That's what I understand. Yes. And we, we haven't we even. We certainly don't want to infringe on anybody's rights, but we want to preserve everybody's rights. Yeah. So. And I don't well, have I don't have a, a I don't know what to do about the RV yet. Um, that, that that because that that creates kind of a particular problem. But that also might be a matter of scale, scale of space. You know, because an RV parked on a quarter or half acre lot is a lot different than an RV parked. Hmm. You know, on, on a you know. 10,000 square feet or something so I, I don't know how, how to how to deal with that. that that that's going to be a special circumstance I think Pierre can you come back with us on the RV portion maybe of what other uh, maybe a couple of examples from other cities of how they've maybe taken done RV parking I know some of it does have to come back to having some sort of uh, um, you know wall or you know where it you know where it gets parked and I think it goes also goes back to if there's enough room or if it's just you know taking up the entire driveway um, and, and it just sits there for months so but if there's a, a couple of examples that might help us make a better informed decision on maybe a tip or a similar type of city like Placerville as opposed to you know a city that's more suburban yeah staff can certainly do that in fact staff would encourage any com commissioners if you happen to have some free time it is very very easy to google any city in the in the state or, or the country for that matter and look at their ordinance 
this ordinance, uh, staff tried to keep it very, very simple. In fact, it mirrors very closely to El Dorado County. Typically, we look at El Dorado County first because a lot of the city code, I think, was probably modeled after a lot of the portions of El Dorado County. Very, very similar. And so that's where this comes from. It's This is not atypical. This is very, very typical what you would see in most jurisdictions. But we'll certainly take a look and see if there's anything different regarding um, the storage of RVs. Thank you. Okay, so we'll revisit this uh, hopefully in a couple weeks. Yes. Uh, item six, matters from commissioners and or staff. Uh, staff doesn't have anything at this point uh, to, to bring to the commission, but if there's something in particular uh, that you have that staff can answer, we can certainly try and assist. Uh, the only question I have is, do we have any activities planned for uh, the wagon train on Saturday? I know the street's going to be closed, but I'm not aware of any. Do we have any events? I'm not aware of any street dances or anything associated yeah. with that, okay. actually. All right. But I will be here for that. All right. And then I, I wanted to just publicly um, apologize to uh, uh, my fellow commissioners, the staff, and, and the public for uh, my, my sudden unanticipated absence at our last meeting. Uh, there was just no way to, to call and contact anybody. And maybe we could figure out a way to do that. Circumstances just evolved with uh, my dad in the hospital and everything. And I just all of a sudden, I'm not going to be able to make the meeting. So, but I had no way to call anybody. So, um, I really am sorry if that happened. But uh, like to be able to at least get notice to staff uh, or somebody, ha you know, when those things do happen, because I think things can come up like that. But I felt terrible. Sorry. Well, thank you. Um, any other matters from commissioners? Do we have a planned next meeting? Do we have a meeting planned for the twentieth? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. And staff apologizes for not getting your agenda packet to you today uh, with the city planner on vacation, and we're right in the middle of budget that I'm personally working on. Just didn't have the time to get that last staff report done, but we hope to get it. Uh, your packet will be ready tomorrow. Thank you very much. That should do it. We will adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.